Okay, welcome back to another walk or talk. Is Jesus your friend? I've had people, and I, I was a false convert, and a lot of people say, I'm a friend of Jesus, and he's my friend. I'm a friend of Jesus, and he's my friend. Well, let's look at the start of this study by looking at the definition of what a friend is. Okay. Definition number one, one who is attached to another by affection. Okay. One who entertains for another sentiments of esteem, respect, and affection. In other words, a friend is someone you respect, someone that you're attached to by another affection, uh, by affection, which leads him to desire his company. A friend is someone who you desire his company. And to seek to promote his happiness and prosperity, opposed to foe or enemy. Okay, seek to promote his happiness and prosperity. Are you trying to please God? If we go back through these and try to apply them to God, attach another by affection. You know, we love Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ. We do. One who entertains for another sentiment or esteem. We do things for the Lord to please Him. That's our purpose in life is to please God. Um, respect and affection. Okay, do you respect Jesus Christ? Do you have affection for Him? Okay, another definition, the reason we're going through all of these is to understand that people like to take a word in the Bible, and remember words have meaning, and they like to do uniform translation. It's the same definition, like the, I call it uniform uh, definition. <laughs> they take a word and they like to say it has one definition and they use it across the board. Okay, so, and that's not true. Words have meaning, they have different definitions. It's all based on the context that it's used in. Uh, definition number two, one not hostile. In other words, opposed to an enemy in war. Uh, I'm not, I'm your friend. I'm not your enemy. Okay? That doesn't mean that you're attached to another by affection. It's your way of saying, I'm not your enemy. When you go out there to preach the gospel, this is what you're supposed to be. I'm your friend, not attached by affection, other than loving the lost world is preaching the gospel to them, but and mostly how you present the gospel to somebody, you're not supposed to do it as an enemy. Okay? You're not to be hostile. Uh, three, Apostle Paul said that a lot, you know, that uh, friends, he'll say friends as he's trying to preach the gospel and the truth. Okay, three, one reconciled after enmity, let us be friends again. Okay, a friend can be somebody that was a friend in the past, and you lost that friendship, and now you're friends again. Okay, that's important. Uh, six, a favorite. Uh, uh, Hushai, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, was David's friend. A favorite. Today they like to use the term best friend. Not just a friend, but a best friend. In other words, a favorite. A term of salutation. Okay, believe it or not, friend doesn't mean uh, attached to another by affection or favorite. It just means you're, it's another way of saying hello. Hello, friend. How are you doing? Can I tell you about Jesus Christ? Okay. Or just in passing, hello, friend. Hey, how's it going? Good. You? Good. And you keep walking. Salutation. A greeting. And you'll see that in the Bible, that it's been used as a greeting. All right, turn to Matthew 11:19. We're going to go over Matthew 11:19 and Luke 7:34. This is a big thing out there saying that Jesus is the friend of sinners across the board. So let's read this in context and let's see the key words that a lot of people like to ignore. Matthew 11:19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold a man gluttonous, a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. People will see that and say that Jesus is a friend of publicans and sinners. The Bible says he is. But look in context. It doesn't say Jesus is saying, I am a friend of publicans and sinners. He's saying, they say. Who's the they? Uh, Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, people who attack Jesus Christ. They say it. The story is retold in Luke 7.34. 
The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. And there's an exclamation point there because those Sadducees, uh, Pharisees, and scribes, it wasn't just like, he, he's a friend of sinners. They were going around going, he's the friend of sinners and publicans. Making it a big issue and boasting and throwing it out there hardcore. Okay? So I threw that in there to say that Jesus wasn't the one saying, I'm a friend of sinners and publicans. When people do that, you take them back to these verses and say, who's the they there? And over here when it says, ye say, who's the ye? Is that Jesus Christ? Are people that were opposed to Jesus Christ? Is that the apostles saying it? The ones who are for Jesus Christ? No. Okay. It was the people attacking Jesus Christ. So... I had to put that out there because remember that as we get through here, there's, condi there's a condition for Jesus being your friend. And we're going to wrap this study up with it. But turn to John 19.12. We're going to go over an another context of what being a Christian is. I mean a Christian. Uh, the definition of what a uh, friend is. Okay, And from... Thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. See, <laughs> Caesar. Caesar. Definition number two that I mentioned in the Webster's 1820 Dictionary. One not host hostile, opposed to an enemy in war. So they're saying that... He's the enemy of Caesar if he doesn't crucify Jesus Christ. And of course we know Pilate was a coward. He gave in and he pleased the people instead of doing what was right in his heart. He knew the man was innocent. This is an innocent man. But he gave in to the crowd and pleased the crowd. So they goaded him on by saying if he didn't crucify Jesus Christ, he's the enemy of Caesar. So that's another definition of friend, op opposing to enemy. Now, James 2.23. James 2.23. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believeth God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Notice this has a capital F there, friend of God. One who is attached to another by affection. I almost want to say a favorite, a favorite of God's. He chose Abraham for a reason, okay? Abraham believed God, and what did he believe? He believed God's word. Do you believe God's word? Abraham believed God's word. God made a promise to him, and Abraham believed it. Even when it seemed like it was impossible, Abraham still believed it. So... Um, there's another example of friend in the context of attached to another by affection and could also be used for a favorite. James 4.4. 4. Now we're going to talk about, uh, can you be, will Jesus be, can you be a friend of Jesus and be a friend of the world? Okay. Can you be a friend of Jesus and be a friend of the lost world? Let's read this real quick. Now understand the definitions. If you're under the definition number two, one not hostile, in other words, not enemy, they're going to look at you as their enemy, the lost world, but when you preach the gospel, you do it as a friend when it comes under that context. But are you supposed to be a friend, one who's attached to another by affection of the lost world? hawks are out on the hillside. Okay? Um, it's something to think about. Okay? James 4.4. 4. There's context that's saying the ways of the world. You're not to be a friend of the, the styles and what's popular in the world. But as we see that it could also mean that if you hang out with uh, sinners in the sense that we're abstain from all appearance of evil, 
that those people, the lost world, can get you dragged back into sin. Sin that you gave up for the Lord, the Lord helped sanctify your life through His written word, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, but they can draw you back into the old man. So it's dangerous to be a friend of the lost world. But let's read this. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You can't be a friend of God if you're, the, if you're an enemy of God. Remember, one not hostile opposed to an enemy in war. You can't be the friend of God and be the enemy of God at the same time. Right. You're not to be a friend of the world. I believe that has to do with um, compromising. Okay, You're not to say, well, it's wrong for me, but it's okay for them. You're not to downplay sin. You're not to uh, tolerate sin. Okay, that's another way of saying it. Uh, you're not to fall into trying to, and I'm jumping ahead, uh, reconciling to being reconciled to the world. Okay, let's go to the next verse real quick, and all this will be summed up once I get through all this. Romans 5.10 For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. When we were enemies... You're telling me that when we were lost, we were enemies of God? The lost world that wants nothing to do with Jesus Christ, they're the enemy of God? Yeah. How do they get reconciled to God? Through Jesus Christ. We shall be saved by His life. Okay. We were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Death is burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's how you get reconciled to God and you're no longer the enemy of God. You ever heard the term that the lost world is the enemy? The Bible actually addresses them as the enemy and you're to love your enemy. And you love them by preaching the gospel to them. You don't love them by acting like, you know, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. Being a sinner is not a bad thing. You don't love them by not preaching the truth to them. Okay, you don't love them by trying to say we can all get along. Agree to disagree. Second Corinthians 5.18, all talking about reconciling. Okay, not being an enemy of God. Two, Second Corinthians 5.18, all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself. No. Victoria. Who hath reconciled my dog. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Once again, you don't want to be the enemy of God? You go to the cross. You get saved. You allow him to save you by repenting, believing, confessing both in prayer, and calling upon the name of the Lord to save you. That's the plan of salvation. Salvation has always been God saving you. And I always stress this because you've got the faith alone crowd that believe they've earned their faith, or earned their faith, earned salvation with their faith and they take it. Okay? Salvation has always been God's grace, God saving you. You didn't earn it with your faith. You didn't earn it with repentance. You didn't earn it by confessing both in prayer. That's why you call upon the name of the Lord to save you because you're telling God, I don't deserve to be saved. I am a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on my way to hell, and I deserve to go there for sinning against you, God. I'm talking about talking to God. We've all been there, brothers and sisters in Christ. You want not to be an enemy of God? Be reconciled to Him. And you've got to go through Jesus Christ to be reconciled. And we have the ministry, it says there, of reconciliation. What's the ministry of reconciliation? Going out and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Preaching that you guys are sinners. That's why Jesus died for you. You need to repent and believe. We're doing a big study right now on repentance, going through every time repentance is used. It's always about something that happens here. Or it's God changing his providence and how he's dealing with people. Okay. It's not a work to repent. 
2 Corinthians 5.20. What happens after you're reconciled to Jesus Christ? Or to God through Jesus Christ? Now then we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. When you become reconciled to God, brothers and sisters in Christ, you become an ambassador for Jesus Christ, and then you go out preaching reconciliation to God through Jesus Christ. That's what they're saying. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Preaching the gospel. Now, the Bible uses the term for the lost world that they're enemies, but the reason a salutation is used, the term of salutation, when you say friend, even to the lost world, it's a way of saying I'm not your enemy. I'm here to preach truth. I'm telling you the reconciliation, how you can be reconciled to God. I'm not your enemy. Satan's your enemy. Sin, your flesh, is your enemy. Okay? Now, I wanted to go and talk about love real quick and its relationship to friendship. We see there that being reconciled to God, not loving the world, if you're not reconciled to God, then you've chosen the world over God. Okay? In other words, you love the world. Love not the world. If you've chosen your flesh and sin over Jesus Christ, over God, then you love the world. Everyone who rejects Jesus Christ loves the world. Now for Instruction Righteous, we know for us that we're supposed to get away from the false systems and sinful and wickedness of the world. The world says this is okay, God's Word says it isn't. We stand for God's world and we reject, with, I mean, we stand for God's Word and reject the world. Okay, but I wanted to get into love because the main verse that explains how Jesus will be your friend, we're going to get there. 1 John 2.15 Love not the world, neither things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I just explained that. Uh, let me finish. We're going to go to 17. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. People choose the lust of the flesh over Jesus Christ. And the lust of the eyes. The Bible talks about... Um, it's not enough just to sin, like to physically do that act of sin, but you take pleasure in them that do them. Notice here it says the lust of the eyes. The Bible says you're to abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay, And the pride of life. Um, one of the biggest things, uh, Joel Olstein's book, Your Best Life Now. I got old glasses and they tend to slide down. I keep having to push them back up. But the pride of life. Okay, uh, self-righteousness and being proud of who they are in their sin and the life they're living, your best life now. Okay, they don't realize that this is actually your worst life now. Your best life is yet to come. Uh, is not of the Father, but is of the world. All this stuff is of the world. You cannot be reconciled to God and keep those things. Okay. In other words, want those things is a better way to say it. You can't say it's okay to have lust of the flesh. I mean, it's okay. Uh, we're all sinners. It's no big deal. Uh, you're supposed to be fighting the flesh. Okay, the lust of the eyes. You're supposed to be doing your best to abstain from all appearance of evil and keep them away from your eyes. Okay, if you're giving into the lust of the flesh and it's no big deal, you're justifying sin. I've always taught that one of the big red flags of a uh, false convert is over time you'll start realizing it's not that they're struggling with sin they tend to really justify a lot of sin it's no big deal they justify it justify it okay um, it's not of the father but of, is of this world uh, pride of life okay the Bible talks about a prideful look uh, talks about uh, pride goeth yeah pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall a lot of the people, the destruction that I believe the pride is talking about, uh, I can have pride as a Christian and you'll realize it will lead to a lot of bad things happening and sorrow, but when it comes to the lost world, that destruction is they're going to go to hell. Okay, It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passeth the way, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. 
Love not the world. What's loving not the world? You're doing the will of God. You're getting saved. You and me, brothers and sisters, God saved us. We came broken. We didn't have pride. We came saying that we can't stand the lust of the flesh. We can't stand the lust of our eyes. We're just horrible. We're dirty, rotten, filthy, low down, no good sinners on our way to hell. And we deserve to go to hell and we don't want to go there. We don't, we're tired of the life that we're living apart from you, Lord. Okay. Once we get saved, the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. Okay, you realize that um, through the word of God, sanctification, you know, thy word have I hidden mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Those three verses is a great verses to get memorized. So when you start falling in temptation, you'll remember those three verses and you'll go back to the book. You'll turn back to Jesus and ask him in prayer to help you with those temptations with those sins that you're struggling with in life. Okay. Let's see. But he that doeth the will of, my, of God abideth forever. Abideth. Okay. What's the number one will of God, I believe? That no, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to being a friend of Jesus, that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay. God's will is for everyone to get saved, and not everyone's going to get saved. God's will for you and me, brothers and sisters, was for us to come to Him broken so He could save us. Repent, believe, confess both in prayer. Repent and believe is something that's supposed to happen in the heart. You cannot, your belief is up here if you skip repentance. I've said that a million times, and I've got these faith alone, easy believism people always attacking me because they can't stand having that belief in their heart. They like having it just up here. They don't want it down here. Okay? The will of God. Now, love not the world. In other words, you're not to be the friend of the world. John 15, 17. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, okay, remember hate. Uh, it's hostile to me. Okay, reconciliation after enmity. Uh, they hate you. You can have a friend that you break up with and you guys so bad that you hate one another and you're not supposed to because we're going to find out later that that's a way you you're not a friend of, of Jesus if you hate your brothers and sisters in Christ um, if the world hate you you know that it hated me before it hated you if ye were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world but I have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hateth you they hated Jesus Christ. Why? Because they didn't want to believe that he was their Messiah. That he was there, he was their king, and he was there to set up the millennial kingdom. They didn't believe in him. In other words, they weren't reconciled to God through him. So as we see there, this thing that I command you that you love one another. Love one another. If, you, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Okay? One of the signs that you're a friend of Jesus and that he's your friend is the world's going to see that Jesus is your friend in your life. And they're going to hate you for it. Oh, Jesus is your friend? And these false converts like I was, I think more than anything, when you start preaching truth to false converts... The reason I believe they hate you more and more is because they realize in their heart that Jesus is really your friend and Jesus is not their friend. Really your friend, I guess, right? Our friend, brothers and sisters in Christ, and they don't have that friendship. They get prideful, they get envious, they get mad, and they hate you for it. Why isn't their relationship with God the same as yours? Because they're not truly saved. They're lost. They will not have that friendship. Reconciled to God. We are reconciled to God. They are not. They are still trying to be a friend of the world. They're still trying to love the world. They love their flesh and they choose sin over God. Okay? We're to love one another. We're not to hate our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're not to hate the lost world. People. We're to hate the way of the lost world. We're to hate the uh, what's going on in the lost world. You can hate that. 
the lost world saying what's okay when the Bible says it's not. Uh, false gods, false systems, false religions, especially those that try to use the name Jesus and they're promoting the Antichrist. Okay, we know a lot of those. The biggest one's Catholicism. The Catholic Church promotes an Antichrist. We can hate the system, but we're not to hate the people. We're to love our enemies, and we do that by preaching the gospel to them. So, through that in there to know that one of the signs of a Christian being a Christian is the lost world's going to hate you. You're going to preach truth to them. You're going to preach the gospel to them. You're going to have a zero tolerance for sin. Uh, why don't you go out to the bars with this anymore? I'm saved now. God saved me. That's a sin. The Bible says I'm not supposed to do it. I'm not going to do it. Movies, video games, TV shows, uh, we talked about drinking, smoking, um, doing worse things. Uh, I, they're all sin, but uh, porn, you know, and lying, um, stealing, okay? Uh, your words, hey, you don't cuss anymore. You're not fun. You're not cool like us because you don't cuss anymore, okay? You have a zero tolerance for sin, and they see that because of your relationship with Jesus Christ, He cleanses your life. He tells you what to do and you obey it. Okay? He commands. Okay? And that's where we get. Um, we're going to get to the main verse here real quick, here in a second. But you want Jesus to be your friend? The whole point of these verses I was talking about is you have to be reconciled to, to God through Jesus Christ. You want Jesus to be your friend? You have to get saved. You gotta do what God commands you, which is being reconciled to, to God through Jesus Christ. You gotta be saved to be a friend of God. Okay? You're not to reconcile yourself with the world. Okay? A lot of these people are trying to reconcile themselves with the world. And what type of people is that? Um, lost people. But the biggest example that brothers and sisters in Christ that you and I see is these false converts. They try to choose the world and Jesus Christ, and you can't do both. They try to reconcile themselves with the world and Jesus Christ, and you can't do both. You can't say, I'm going to keep my sin, and I'm going to continue doing, living the life I live. I don't believe sin is that big of a deal. I don't think all sin is wrong. I mean, you know, I can justify what's sin and what's not. I don't have to follow God's word. But you know what? I'm going to believe in Jesus Christ, because, you know, we all want to go to heaven. They refuse to repent. They don't have godly sorrow for sinning against God. They are trying to be reconciled to this world. Okay. They choose the world over Jesus Christ, and then they think they can have both, these false converts. The lost world just says flat out, I'm going to be reconciled with the world. I don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. But you have a lot of false converts that think they can keep the old man. That's the best way to say it. They think they can still remain the old man and be saved. They don't have to give up the old man. The old man is reconciled with the world. The new man is reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the big things you also hear is we need to put aside our differences. You have a lot of Christians that are falling away, that are saved, and you're seeing a lot of false ones are coming to light because they're compromising and they're trying to be reconciled to the world by saying we can all agree to disagree. Okay, we need to put aside our differences. And doing that, you have all these false systems of Christ what they call Christianity, and you're falling in the trap of uniting with them. And you're not supposed to. Okay, you're not to be reconciled with this lost world. You're not to be reconciled with false religions, satanic religions. Okay, but here is the main verse for this whole study. Turn to John 15, 12. If anything, remember the two key points here. Being reconciled to God. And we're going to read this here. John 15, 12. This is my commandment. This is where I'm being stern with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. This isn't a choice. This isn't, oh, it's not a big deal. If you fail to do this, it's not a big deal. This is my commandment. God's not asking, He's telling you, and He's telling me, that ye love one another as I have loved you. How did Jesus love us? 
Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. This isn't an option. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things have I heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. God gave us his perfect written word. Okay? This is my commandment, that you love one another. That's a command, that you love one another. You want Jesus to be your friend? You're to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, part of this ministry, a big part of this ministry, has to do with um, encouraging the brethren, promoting prayer. Prayer is so important in your life. You should be praying a lot. The Bible says you're to pray without ceasing. You should be praying a lot. Not just a little prayer in the morning. Not just a little prayer before you eat, saying, Lord, thank you for this food. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. You should be talking with the Lord a lot throughout your day. You're doing work saying, Lord, I'm struggling with this. Or, Lord, I need help with building this. I'm, I'm having trouble figuring it out. Can you help me, Lord? Uh, thank you, Lord, for this. All Something great happens. To God be all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for doing this for me. Okay. Uh, word of prayer, I'm doing this to, because I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. Another part of this ministry is testimonies. Uh, prayer and testimonies go hand in hand in the sense it's to encourage the brethren. Prayer to have a good relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, testimonies to encourage us. Uh, not just that, hey, I got saved, and if God could save a wretch like me, he can save a wretch like you. That's a good testimony when you do your how you got saved testimony, how you came to Jesus Christ, and he saved you. But there's also testimonies throughout your life as a Christian saying, God saved me here when I screwed up. God helped me here. God blessed me with this. And it just, it's a blessing. There's a lot of good testimonies out there that brothers and sisters have, and sometimes you don't know you have it. You say, well... You downplay it and say, well, it was a great thing, but does it really, you know, is it really worth saying anything about? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, and the other one, to encourage brothers and sisters with their walk with the Lord. I do it because I love you. Okay. Just like I'm doing with this study. I'm driving it home. Okay. We're to love one another. And how do I love the lost world? I preach the gospel to them. I have a zero tolerance for sin. They see a changed life in me and know there's a difference in me. Okay. I have neighbors that thought I, uh, knew, uh, looked at me as a Christian that goes to these Babel buildings and maybe even a Catholic. Thought maybe I was even a Catholic. Um, because that's how bad the world's getting. When they see Christian, they think Catholic. And a Catholic is not Christian. Okay. Far from it. Okay. Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Okay? When you get saved, brothers and sisters in Christ, you're realizing that Jesus laid down his life for you. And when you get saved, you become Jesus' friend. Now, there's times, like I showed up there, one reconciled after enmity. Okay? There's times that uh, you, my friends, if you do whatsoever, I command you. Whatsoever. I command you. So it's not just this command. This command has to do with loving your brothers and sisters in Christ. And we talked about reconciliation, how we were reconciled to God. But there's a lot of commands in this Bible. Okay? Um, you want to be a friend of Jesus, you do your best to keep the commands that He commands you in this Bible. Okay? But there's commands in the Bible, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We saw some commands up there. Uh, we're not to be a friend of the world. We're to be re reconciled to the Lord. Okay, we're not to be a friend of the world. Um, love not the world. Okay, abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay, we have commands that we are given, and we're to do our best to obey them. That's how Jesus is our friend. The biggest command of all is being reconciled to Jesus Christ. When we got saved, we obeyed that command, and now Jesus is our friend. That's the biggest one. Uh, the Bible talks about commanding everywhere to repent. Okay? 
Um, uh, God's wish is that no, as will is that no man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, the first command, if you want Jesus to be your friend, and we have that, brothers and sisters in Christ, is that we were reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. What's the second biggest command of Jesus being your friend? You love one another, as Jesus loved us. Okay, to the point that you will lay down your life for the brethren saying, I'm not backing down. I want to preach truth, brothers and sisters in Christ, because I love you. And if preaching truth means that I get killed, if preaching truth means I lose friends, it doesn't matter. I'm going to lay my life down for the brothers and sisters in Christ by preaching truth, by encouraging you. True love. Okay? Loving one another. And also being a friend to Jesus Christ and proof in your life that Jesus is your friend is A, that you're saved, B, that you love one another, and C, that you're doing your best to live a life of Christ. Whatsoever I command you. There's things in here you come across, even today I come across things, and it's like, wow, I, I didn't know it was twofold. Okay, it meant this, so I helped clean up my life in this area, but it also means this. You know, there's no wiggle room, in other words. And I find stuff in the house that's not good, and I have to throw it out. And we continue to do our best to throw things out that are evil and wicked. We don't want to invite Satan into our home. So brothers and sisters in Christ, take this to heart to realize that if you're truly a friend of Jesus, Jesus better be your friend. Okay? So ask yourself and reflect on your life. I want to be Jesus' friend, and I say I'm Jesus' friend, but is Jesus my friend? Are you truly saved? Do you truly love the brethren, your brothers and sisters in Christ? Okay. Do you truly love the lost world by preaching the truth to them and having a zero tolerance for sin, the changed life that reflects the lost world sees a difference in you? Do you show true love for the lost world? Are you keeping whatsoever Jesus commands you. You're doing your best. You can fall. You can stumble and fall. Drop your cross. And I always preach this to people, brothers and sisters in Christ. I encourage you that when you drop that cross, you fall into sin and temptation. You fail to uphold God's commands. Jesus is not going to stop being your friend if, and he's not going to stop being your friend permanently. Remember we talked about how you can be reconciled after enmity. What's enmity? Sinning. Okay, enmity between God. Um, I know enmity means enemy, but so I got that wrong. I apologize. But it says Jesus said it Himself, and I use that verse all the time that you are to deny yourself repentance. Okay, you're to pick up your cross daily, not pick up your cross and keep it. And if you drop it, you're, that's it. You're done. No, you're to pick up your cross daily. Forsake. Repent, forsake, and follow me. Get back to your relationship with Jesus Christ. He's your friend. Repent it, forsake it, move on. That's the move on part. You start, you pick up right where you left off with your relationship with the Lord. And I always push that you hit your ground. You hit the ground fast <laughs> as far as kneeling, not, not necessarily feeling like physically doing it, but with your actions and your heart, uh, you get that cleaned up, and you get your heart right with the Lord ASAP. Okay, Jesus will be your friend. Is Jesus your friend, brothers and sisters in Christ? I thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.